Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. This is version 1.0.5 because that's a thing that happened now and I made a box called the Flight Box. I mean, a save. So I did a live stream of it yesterday, so if you want to see that, you still can, and I went over a bunch of the planes. By that I mean the new stock craft. I didn't go over any of the new stock rockets, however, and I've accidentally loaded an old stock rocket. But if you don't want to sit through an hour and a half of me faffing about with things, this video is for you, because right now I'm just going to basically take a look through the stock rockets real fast to see what they have, such as the Dyna Wing, which is... <laughs> a weird space shuttle thing, because it's got like only two engines in here, and there's got- Are these monoprop- Yeah, they are, they're monoprop engines. This is like a smaller space shuttle, I'm guessing, yeah, because it's- This definitely looks like it's, uh, hooked up to be a smaller space shuttle. Does it have anything in the cargo bay? Oh, it does! I'm guessing this is just more fuel to make it actually work, because it wouldn't otherwise. There's- there's also- Those are just structural pieces. That's interesting. I wonder why they decided to make this- the way it is. Who knows why they decide to make stock craft the way they do. This already existed, but looked a bit different. That's interesting. And then we have the Slim Shuttle. Oh, hey, look at that! Oh my gosh, it's like a little- Oh, it's like a little tiny space shuttle based on these parts with clipping right there that is annoying me. Uh, ignoring that, yes. Interesting. So let's take a look at the new parts. Starting with the Mark 1 cockpit that has been redesigned. Okay, so it's not a new part, but it has been redesigned, so you can see it looks a bit different. Additionally, the Mark 1 liquid fuel fuselages have been redesigned, and there is a Mark 0 liquid fuel storage, as well as a Mark 0 turbojet engine. Not turbojet, just a jet engine. It's a very tiny basic engine. It's called the Juno. It's a small tur- Oh, it is a turbojet. Yes, not very efficient. Anemic thrust, but hey, it's cheap. And it's so cute! Look at the little thing! The Weasley has gotten a redesign, so you can see the old basic jet is now looking like that. We have the new Panther Afterburning Turbofan, which is designed for jet fighters. Has a pretty good punch. It's somewhere between the old basic jet and the old turbo jet in performance, but it has a lot stronger vectoring. We also have the Goliath Turbofan, which is a giant engine that is really meant to be placed under the wing of a plane, but it can also be stack attached, as you just saw, and it will give it a nice little fairing so it can be hooked in with Mark II parts to make an interesting rear end to a plane. Additionally, the Whiplash Turbojet engine, this would be the old turbojet, has been redesigned. And the old radial engines that we had, which are now called thuds, I don't know if they were called thuds before now, but they're called thuds now, and they look like this. They also have better vectoring than they used to, and are appropriate for making a OMS pod on a shuttle, other than the fact that they use regular liquid fuel and oxidizer. Speaking of a shuttle, we have the new vectoring engine, appropriately enough, called the vector engine, if I remember correctly. Yes, it's a very high thrust, however, Mark 1, and very high engine, very high vectoring range, designed for use on space shuttles, very much looks like a space shuttle engine. While we're at it, the old aerospike has been redesigned, so it looks a little bit different now. In the structural parts, we now have this giant thing, which is a mount for putting vectoring engines on, on the back of a space shuttle. Pretty useful, you saw it on the other shuttle. We also have these pylons for detaching, or excuse me, small hard points, which are basically little ejectable things for mounting things on, which is pretty cool. Uh, one of the new features, I keep zooming, I keep scrolling out when I mean to scroll in because I'm used to SPH controls. You can disable staging or enable staging as desired. You can also disable and enable and disable, uh, whatchamacallit, crossfeed. You can also set the force of the ejection, so you can make it eject very strong at its normal force, or you can make it just drop. There's also a non-ejecting structural pylon, which is much bigger. I believe this might be a rescale of the old one. In fact, I think both of these might be reskins of old pieces. Over in aerodynamics, we have an interesting new thing in that the tail fins now display a flag across them. The old Mark I intake has been redesigned, as well as the small circular intake has been added. I was about to say has been redesigned, but no, that is a new part. There's also the old radial intake has been redesigned, and I think that's about it for the aerodynamics for the aerodynamic parts. There's also the Convertitron 125, which is the smaller ISRU. So it's like a Mark I ISRU. There you go. 
There's also a smaller drill now. Finally, yes, smaller drill. I've been wanting that. And is this? Oh no, that's the regular one. The uh, the icon. I don't know. It looks different to me. There's also the Mark One crew cabin and a Mark Three cargo ramp, which has an adjustable height setting for how far the cargo ramp will open. There's also a new edge radiator panel, so you know you can mount a radiator panel on the side of a rocket, like so. And moving down to science, um, did that exist? It's been a long time since I've played around with science. No, that existed. I already have seen that. And, uh, it doesn't look like there's anything else new in here. Yes, these all existed already. But yeah, that's all the new stuff. So, uh, welcome to KSP 1.0.5. I don't have a particular goal right now, so I will delete this. And go start working on a space shuttle design. This, the SPAC shuttle, I will now modify to make more like an actual shuttle. We're gonna keep the giant wing, uh, whatchamacallit, the giant Elevons on here, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the much smaller Elevon 3 for the end piece, because the other one was clipped in in a way that was kind of ugly and I didn't like it, so hopefully this shall avoid that problem. Unfortunately, it looks like we cannot quite avoid that problem with this Elevon, so I'm gonna try the Elevon 2, which is probably gonna have the same problem. Yes, it also sticks out just a bit too far. So what I'm going to do instead is use the Elevon 2 here, which is much smaller, as the base Elevon. And then use the Elevon 3, which in comparison is actually looks a little bit bigger, which is kind of funny. And then, well, unfortunately this means that we don't have anything on the end of the wing, which is not the best look which is why I'm trying to add this, but see that, we would have to clip it in in a weird way, and I would not like that. Perhaps, by rearranging things very, very carefully, we can get around this problem, but I don't think so. Actually, uh, but see, now, now this would clip into there. So I think what I'll try doing is I'll use these for pitch and roll. Actually, I will use this one for pitch, yes, pitch and not roll, this one for pitch and roll, and this one not at all, and make sure that it'll deploy down if we do deploy it, and that way it can kind of stay hidden under there and not ever clip into the fuselage, because see, this is the problem I have with using this as a, using this control surface, is you see that it clips into the main fuselage ever so slightly, which I do not like. I like when things actually make physical sense in KSP. I know that's kind of a weird thing, but yeah. I'm gonna save this as this back shuttle too. It'll get a real name later on. All right, and here we are. And I've learned a very careful lesson about flying this thing. Don't use these engines. Actually, that's not the lesson I was gonna say. The lesson is don't go at max throttle. But anyhow, you can see we have, oh yeah, I forgot. These will rotate if you go into roll, which is pretty freaking cool if you think about it. I mean, I don't know. I just think that's pretty freaking cool personally. But uh, let's go ahead and engage the SAS so we have a bit of stability assistance. And let's go ahead and throttle up. And we'll take off with this as soon as we get up enough speed, which I could throttle up to maximum and get us up quicker, but that's kind of dangerous. But actually, there we go. We're now in the air. And we're going pretty damn fast already, because that engine on the back there is very, very powerful. Remember, it's designed to launch a vehicle about the size of this, plus a giant freaking booster full of fuel at the same time. So yeah, that engine's pretty freaking powerful. Anyhow, as you can see, this is uh, flying pretty well. I mean, it is a space shuttle, so it's not going to fly the best. But overall, it's flying pretty well. We're going to do a uh, gradual turn here. And we're basically going to come back and attempt a landing at the KSC. Now, if you saw my live stream, spoiler alert, I crashed the damn thing when I came in for landing because I didn't pull up hard enough at the end. And that was disastrous. But this time, we're going to uh, hopefully come in a bit close, uh, a bit closer, no, a bit more carefully. And I'm going to go ahead and throttle, oops, throttle up to full to simulate us not having any fuel on board by, well, getting rid of all the fuel on board, which unfortunately is making us go really fast, which is a bit unrealistic because we would be slower at this point in the atmosphere. 
although I can turn down to go faster. And we're going to completely miss the runway, but uh, that's okay. We're just going to try to pull up and have a safe landing by uh, pulling up, pulling up. Okay. We're losing altitude slower than... Okay, slower, slower. And now this is the difficult part. We have to pull up and not come down too quickly. Actually, we're still too high up. Okay, pull up and gently touch down. And now we can engage the brakes, disable SAS, probably re-enable it since we're going up a hill now. And uh-oh, uh bounce into the air. Careful, woo, careful, careful. We do not want to fly again. Okay, okay, and carefully, carefully land it. <laughs> this is why you land on runways. But as you can see, other than the fact that we completely missed the runway, this is capable of safely landing, at least with empty fuel and no cargo. The question is, we need a launcher to actually launch it into space. We also need a... Well, we don't need it, but it'd be cool if you could land with some cargo in the bay. But there you go. Working very basic space shuttle. No RCS on board. Well, it has the fuel, but there's no uh, RCS systems on board. But uh, there you go. Yes. Okay, now opening up that shuttle in the VAB, we're going to get it vertically placed. Oops, wrong button. And it's time to design a launcher for it. The first step of which I'm going to use this big decoupler here as how it attaches to the rest of the rocket. Oh yes, I'm hitting the wrong buttons. I'm used to building in the SPH. I've been building in the SPH for too long. Where is the button I'm looking for? There we go. And let's turn no, no symmetry. Okay. Now we should probably launch, we should probably launch, no, attach this at the center of mass, which is way down here. So I'm actually going to attach it slightly above the center of mass. Actually, because remember, we're going to be thrusting up from those engines through the uh, attachment point. Because remember, all the thrust, or at least almost all of it, comes from this right here. I figured this is a very uh, a basic tank to get started with. These tanks do not have a straight up... Let's see, you go to structural... No, not structural. We need... We need a nose cone for it. More specifically, we need a nose cone that is like this, but for it. And I believe we'll have to go to adapters and crap. Structural parts. It's probably some big adapter. There we go. One of these. And we'll have to put one down here, which then goes into this. Which makes it a lot spikier than the real shuttle's... Uh, cone thing at the bottom, which is why I'm thinking about using an arrow shell instead down here, and just making it so it's kind of, uh, hold on, let's see, like that, nope, come on, let me place it, why can't I place it there, okay, I can place it there, but I can't just immediately place it in, okay, that doesn't make any sense, but okay, oh, now see, that looks stupid, why'd you do that, KSP, why'd you do that, that doesn't look cool. Let's, uh, let's, let's redo that. How do I, okay, undo the last one. What if I just, okay, undo that one, put it like that, and then put it like that. It's, uh, it's a bit flat, but, uh, I think that'll do. And we'll use this on the top of the tank once we get there. But, uh, to get there, first we're gonna need more fuel. I think another one of these ought to do it. And then we'll just put this on top and, uh, have that be our fuel tank. Uh, the real thing, I believe, the fuel tank is a bit bigger than this relative to the rocket. But uh, considering this is KSP physics we're dealing with here, this should probably be sufficient. Now, of course, it wouldn't be complete without two SRBs stuck on the sides. And for that, we're going to use the thumpers. Where are they? Thumper, thumper, thumpers. That would be under engines, not fuel tanks. And, oh, no, not thumpers. Thumpers are too small. Kickbacks. That's what they're called, the kickbacks. <laughs> I find that really funny that they're called the kickbacks. Okay. That. Nope. There. Like that. Yeah, I think that's good. And then we're going to put parachutes on them that 
in all likelihood won't ever actually see use because they'll despawn before the parachutes could activate, but we'll put them on anyhow. Okay, there we go. We have a basic space shuttle that may or may not work at all. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me go ahead and figure out, first of all, why is this like not showing up anywhere? I have a, no, that, that would be correct. Well, that, it shows up on this part. Oh, but not there either. Okay, well, let's just place it there and hope it works. <laughs> All right. Let's put that in right about there. That seems reasonable. Yeah, that seems pretty secure. Okay, and then we'll need another one of these struts, non-symmetrically placed, because it's just going to go from here to... to... let's see, right about there. There we go. So you got a nice strut holding that together. You got struts holding the rockets together. Okay, we're gonna need uh, launch clamps, which I will put, I'm thinking, two here, attached to this, and then another one over here, attached to the main fuel tank. Obviously we need fuel cross-feed, which I've completely forgotten about until this moment, but that will be provided in the form of this fuel line once I place it. Camera is uh, fighting me just a little bit, but it should be relatively easy to place. I just need to get it lined up right. Okay. That's probably off center. Not too bad. Not too bad. I'm, I'm happy with it. And I believe that's most of what I'm going to do with this design. Yeah. Uh, we shall see if it works. And I'll call it the Spec Shuttle 2 LV, because it's lift vehicle, launch vehicle, whatever. And uh, obviously I'm going to need to fix the action groups down here, because... Okay, first of all, we're going to not want the OMS. We're going to want these three main engines to fire. And then we're going to want the... Whatchamacallits? Oh, that's interesting. That has a fuel tank icon here. Yes, we're going to want the... All these, uh, what, should my, what are they called? Stability enhancers? Whatever. We're going to want them to go at the same time we want the solid rockets to kick off. We want the parachutes and decouplers to fire at the same time. Actually, we probably don't want them firing at the same time, but, uh, shh, whatever. Then we have, what's this do? That decouples that. I'm guessing this would actually fire the fairings off, which we don't want. In fact, can I disable that? No, I cannot. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll put it up here in this stage so it won't get activated. And uh, I think we're ready to give this a try. <laughs> ah, nothing can possibly go wrong, I said lying. Let's first rotate this around so that we will be launching that way towards east, towards orbit. And this is with new aerodynamics, so I don't know how this will go at all. Because I don't think I've tried to make a shuttle in the new aerodynamics. I've made one, I think, a long time ago. It's been a long time since I've done space shuttle stuff. So, this may go terribly. Are you ready? I hope you're ready. I don't know if I'm ready. Fire main engines. Fire SR... Uh, SRVs. Fly this way uncontrollably. And uh, we've now doomed everyone. Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, let's let's activate those. And actually, I don't think we need to activate those. We just need to come in for landing safely. Why are the landing gear not going down? Okay. Let's go ahead and let it nose down just a bit. Oh, we need to pull up more than that! See, the problem is this thing does have a tendency to disintegrate if you give it just a little bit too much force on the landing gear. Which is stupid, but yeah. Okay, so the problem there was too much thrust on the shuttle side. Although uh, these SRBs certainly didn't have enough thrust to boost up this tank properly. So what we're going to do, what we're going to try this time, we're going to try reducing the fuel in this. And also at the same time, we're going to try reducing the thrust, not on those ones. Let's reduce the thrust on this one to 84%. And let's reduce the thrust on these each to 94%. So that's that one. That's that, wait, nope, 94%. And hopefully that'll help a little bit. Obviously these we're gonna keep at 100%. They uh, they really need to be there. And I'm gonna call this two because I've changed some things. Okay, here we are. 
Ready to get going. Fire, fire, and... We're more controllable. Not by much. This is still going to go badly. Oh well. Let's have fun with it this time. Eh, let's, uh, let's eject everything. Ooh. Those are making pretty noises, and now they're exploding. <laughs> Alright, and we're going pretty fast, so I'm gonna go ahead and nose down, and I'm going to deploy the landing gear. And then I'm going to flare up now. Because I flared up too late last time. Oh, now we're going up. That's a problem. Except that there's land in front of us, so... Actually, it's probably a good thing that we're going up. Just a bit. And let's try and touch down here. Nope. Let's... Actually, let's get over this lip. Just kind of fall gently. Oh, we're going to hit a bit hard. But it's alright. And we're down safely. Well, mostly. I mean, we still need to stop. But at this point, we are safe. Even if I flip it. Well, try to flip it. <laughs> Four five three six four five three five four four oh whoops I messed that up. Okay. Yep, those are the same amount. And we're gonna further reduce the thrust on this engine, maybe? No, let's let's leave it. We'll call this two point one. <laughs> because what's the worst that could happen? And we have control. No we don't. Never mind. It seemed like it for a moment, but then we just continue to tilt. Be gone, boosters! Oh, fuck. Be gone, my life! <laughs> uh, you guys are fucked. Just saying. You guys are fucked. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and get out. Oh, we're on the bottom of it. Uh! Oh. Oh. Man, these things are sturdier than I remember them being. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh... Bye-bye, whoever jumped out. I think it was Jeb. Yeah, Jeb's dead. I killed Jeb. This is not a good sign. Uh, thanks for watching, and as always, uh, be more careful with your uh, shuttle designs or, or your eject systems. Have an emergency parachute. I don't know. That's the moral of this story, something like that. And this is glitched through there, but not in a way that I hate. I think it looks all right, actually. See you in space. Or, uh, not in space, as the case may be. That looks like the Beats logo to me. Hello, and welcome to Kerbal Sam's version 01052983. I fucked that up.